yourself so you can sleep at night? I don't have to tell myself anything when I go to sleep at night. It's the way we live. It's business. Itan, Jeff in Las Vegas. Good morning. Hey, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I was looking so forward to this movie, you know, as a Las Vegas native, and we have the Ma Museum here in Las Vegas. So I'm like, I can't wait to see another story about Myron Lansky and Harvey Keitel, just fantastic. Uh, but this story is really about two outsiders, isn't it? It is. It is to a certain extent. It is. Uh, an old man coming to terms with his life and uh, a young reporter learning what's important through life through him. And, uh, you know, evaluating morality to a certain extent. Kind of pitch it like my dinner with Andre meets Goodfellas. That's how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Goodfellas is one of the greatest movies ever. So well, thank you for that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we try, I, I tried giving um, kind of a different perspective on it and shooting it in a specific way and writing the story in a, a specific way that I thought would uh, encompass who he was when he was an old man as, as well as a, as a young man. And because to me, they were a bit two different people to a certain extent. And how much was fact and how much was uh, artistic license? Because his yeah. life was so complicated and so had so much to, to cover. But I mean, how did you kind of narrow that down and, and tell which, is, which was true? Well, you know, uh, my father interviewed him before he passed away. So, and wrote a book about gangsters and, and does a lot of research, uh, 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 did a lot of research about gangsters. So I did have a good starting point, but I did also a lot of my own research, but, and I asked to connect a lot of the dots because at the end of the day, you know, uh, when you're dealing with uh, organized crime or the underworld, I mean, there are many different perspectives, many different stories, many different uh, uh, perceptions of how it happened, what happened. Um, so you try doing your best connecting the dots and um, a lot of it is true. A lot of the big uh, uh, stories there that happened um, are true, but I did have take some creative liberties, um, you know, not too much, but I did to try and encompass who this man was based on connecting the dots that I needed to do. And, and tell me about the coverage in the diner, because you just have two talking heads. Tell me about the, the challenges of covering that. Well, the, the main challenge was to make it interesting, you know, but, and I think we managed to do that in, with my, my amazing DP, Peter Flinkenberg and Gaffridge and Planetti. Um, what we did there is not only play with the lenses, with the framing of it, but also the color grading. So every time you're in the diner, you get kind of like a different feel and that different feel is based on what, you know, is going on in the story or the flashbacks or the story that he's telling. And something tells me the real Lansky wasn't as, uh, uh, had a wardrobe as cool as Harvey Keitel's in this movie. So tell me about his Miami wardrobe, because he looked really stylish. Well, actually, the, we, 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 you know, my, my costume uh, department, the, we, we took a look at his pictures and we tried emulating exactly what he wore, you know, back then. So, I mean, he was a stylish guy, uh, you know, uh, in general, and he, he liked the uh, uh, kind of like dressing up. So... Yeah, I mean, I think that actually did a good job kind of like emulating. And, and did you rehearse it like a play, having Sam and Harvey in the same, in the, all those scenes? It looked like it, it just like you would just stage it as a play. Uh, no, we actually, uh, not really. I mean, there was improvisation. When you have great actors like Sam and Harvey, you let them improvise when it's needed. Um, but in general, we, yeah, I mean, we, we, I did try getting the authenticity and we did, play a bit, but mostly it was, uh, you know, shot uh, to, to get the coverage, uh, uh, you know, they're reading through the screenplay and then we kind of like free flow. Before, when I, when I direct in general, I like having the actors, like get what I need for the edit or, you know, uh, for the film, but I love to see what they improvise and what they come up with because it comes down to chemistry and how they interact. And that was really amazing, the chemistry between Sam and Harvey. That was just, did you realize that right away once you saw the, the first thing? When you have actors like that, like you know, Harvey Keitel and Sam Worthington, you know, free flowing, you're looking at them acting it out, and you're like, okay, we have something special here. You know, everybody's turning around. That was good, and that was good, and that was good. You know, then it's my job to figure out which of the good ones I want to use. So. And Harvey Keitel's purpose as Lansky was he on board from the beginning? He was on board from the beginning, but it, from the moment he got on board, it took us three years to, to make the movie. So, you know, he stuck in there. I mean, I remember the first year when I, we lived 
uh, close to one another in New York, and I used to see him on the street. I'm like, hey, Harvey is the director from, from Lansky. And the first year is like, hey, great. The second year is like, okay. And the third year is like, who's this, you know, uh, stalker director that's running after me in the street? But, you know, eventually when it happens, he was on board and, you know, he gave me a book at the end and he said, uh, this is to my dear friend, the only stalker I was ever happy that got that caught up to me. So, you know. Well, an excellent drama, uh, really insightful. I enjoyed it immensely. I wish you had more Las Vegas in it, but you just gave it a little, just a little nod. Thank you very much. Uh, for that. You're welcome. Thank you very much.